What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here, welcome back to another PS4 tutorial. So in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you guys how to host the webkit exploit offline, completely offline, so this is something that you guys have been requesting for a long time. I actually have another follow up video to this as well which will show you another method of, um, of hosting offline, but uh, this method will allow you to host uh, the full kernel exploit for 5.05 .05 completely offline. So the most common method is to use the ESP8266 uh, chip, which is like a little USB key, a little Wi-Fi USB key to, to host the exploit offline. And that method is great and I will be doing a follow-up video showing you how to, how to do that. Uh, but this method, you do not require that little uh, Wi-Fi chip. You don't have to buy anything extra for this method, which is what makes this method so so popular. Uh, and it, this method's only come out within the past few days. So the way this method works is it works by browser caching. So you do need to uh, at least once connect to the internet on your PS4 to first access the exploit page, and then the exploit will then get cached into your web into your browser cache on your on your PS4's internet browser, so that you can then access it when you're not online. So that's essentially how this works. What I'm going to do is first of all, I'm currently not connected to PSN, so as you can see, the connect to internet button is unchecked. If I view connection status, you can see. You know, internet connection is off and, you know, we don't have an IP address or anything. And when I go to the user guide to access the web page, uh, I just get a white screen. This is what you would normally expect to see when you're offline and you try and access a web page on your PS4. So what we need to do is we need to first connect to the internet and set up an internet connection. So that's the one disadvantage really to this method. Well, one of the disadvantages to this method is you do still initially need to connect to the internet just, just once in the beginning in order to cache the web page. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do automatic IP, do not specify host name. Now for the DNS settings, you wanna go manual DNS and put in this IP address, 108.61.128.1. And that's what you want there. Now, if that if if that um, website is down on that IP address, there's a second server uh, that you can go to, which is 165.227.83, and finally point one four five. So either one of those two you want to put in for your primary and secondary DNS. Automatic MTTU, do not specify proxy, and the internet settings have been updated. Now you don't actually have to enter those DNSs, you can just go with an automatic DNS if you're trying to do this through the internet browser, but um, for people who don't have access to the internet browser, you're going to have to put in that as your DNS so that you can access the web page from the user guide. So now when we go to the user guide, we get this, and what it's doing right here is it's caching the exploit and this caches the whole exploit so this is caching all the payloads um, in previous uh, well, like when this method was first discovered you had to like load a payload first in order for it to be cached but this process what it's doing right now is it's caching all the payloads so that we'll be able to run them all offline so there we go application cache successfully click OK and that's it we should now have access to all of these offline so all I have to do now is if I back out of this now that we've done that, and we go back into settings, we go to network, and we uncheck connect to internet. So, as you can see, we have no IP address, nothing, completely offline right now. And, you know, if I go to user guide, so I still get an, like an error caching resources, and this cannot display a web page, but after that, you can see that the web page has loaded, even though we're completely offline right now. And I can go to 5.05 .05 and load one of the payloads. Let's do original, which is just waiting for payload, just to show that multiple payloads work. So, I mean, yes, not enough free system memory, that happens, there we go, waiting for payload. So that one works. Um, and then we can also go ahead and load a different payload. 
So 5.05, .05. let's do homebrew enabler. Done, hens activated, and that was completely offline and now these are unlocked and our debug settings will now be enabled in the bottom of the settings. There you go. So completely offline solution. Now you can do the same thing with the internet browser if you have access to the internet browser. So let me just show you how to do it till we reset again, connect back up to the internet and we'll clear our system cache. And I'll show you how to do it through the internet browser this time. So we'll clear website data, clear cookies. That wipes the cache, clears it completely. Now that we are connected to the internet, we would go to the internet browser instead and then we would just type in the IP address into the internet browser. So instead of, instead of adding it as a DNS, if you have access to the, the web browser, you can just put the IP address uh, into the URL bar and go to the web page and then it will start downloading the cache just like it was doing using the user guide method. And here we go, so just about done. There we go, it's fully cached now. And now that it's fully cached, again, I will disconnect from the internet. So we'll go to network, uncheck connect to internet, so that we're offline again. And there we go, we have access to it, even though we're completely offline. And this will also work when you turn off your console and turn it back on. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, power off my console. And I'll turn it back on. So let's go to internet browser again. And there we go. It is running. And we've just completely rebooted the console. So as you can see, we don't have the debug settings. But if I go to uh, network, I'm not connected to the internet still. And then we can go ahead, load up this page and run the homebrew enabler. Hopefully it doesn't shut off my console because that can happen sometimes with this thing. There we go, yeah, it ran. And now we should have the debug settings, even though we're completely offline. How about that? So this offline solution is great because you don't have to spend any money on the little Wi-Fi key, the USB key thing that you had to do before. Um, it just runs completely from the browser cache, which is great. Uh, however, I will be doing a follow-up video to this showing you how to also do the method where you use the little USB key, um, uh, the little Wi-Fi chip, and the reason for that is that method I would say is slightly better if, if you don't mind buying the little Wi-Fi chip for, you know, $8, then it does offer some advantages to this method. So the problem with this method is you do have to initially connect to the internet or at least do the... Uh, the local host uh, method in order to first access the, the exploit page initially so that you can then cache it. So you will have to do that. Plus, if you ever find that your your browser cache gets full and you're not able to load any payloads anymore, then you'll have to clear the cache and once again, either connect to the internet or do the LAN hosted method in order to recache your exploit page again. So it's not a flawless solution the whereas with the wi-fi chip you can be completely offline and never ever connect to the internet whatsoever uh, with the little wi-fi chip method plus with the wi-fi chip method you can connect a computer to the wi-fi chip as well as the ps4 so that you can then take advantage of like the ftp payload to transfer files back and forth which you can't do with this method if you're uh if you have it offline uh, you can't connect a computer to it because it's running from the browser cache, no network connection whatsoever. So um, yeah, there's there's trade-offs with each method. Hopefully you'll stay tuned for that, uh, for that other video as well. And uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, go ahead and leave a like and subscribe and I will hopefully see you guys in the next video.